Thank you for calling. This call may be monitored or recorded. Thank you for calling. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality. Thank you for calling. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance purposes. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it now. For dispatch, press 1. So as you guys can hear, I'm I'm finding it very hard to like actually get in contact with this particular company, Cora Freight. And I'm I'm not sure what's uh what's going on. I I honestly don't know. I mean they do have a website, the phone number that on the website if your phone number is uh anonymous it'll go straight to a a busy signal but if you let your phone number show it actually ring such as it did now and you only have one option and that's the dispatch you don't have an option for uh receptionist you don't have an option for recruitment or anything like that. So the only way to get in contact with this particular company, uh, Core Freight, is that you got to reach out to them via email. The phone number, which is on the website, is two nine. I mean, 219-900-0970. And th no, nobody's answering it. So, again, like I said, the only way to get in contact with somebody at this company, uh, you you have to you have to email. You have to go through uh, a text thing on their website, and then somebody would come back and reach out to you at at their text number or whatever welcome back drivers to the recruiter call channel and in this mtc we're going to be looking at core freight they are offering company drivers 55 to 60 cent per mile depending on experience 3500 miles per week guarantee which is questionable layover and detention pay you get paid weekly and you can occur two days off for every 10 days on the road. On their website as well, they got information for owner operators and lease owner operators. So I don't think they actually have a lease program per se. But if you're a lease driver and you have your own truck and you want to lease on, to them, I think this is what they're talking about. You want to know more about Core Freight? Stay tuned. So as I said in the intro, we wasn't able to get an on-call conversation going about what they had to offer for this company. But they did reach back to me via text uh, at a different phone number so let's get into that so in the text he goes by the name of mark and he's from cora freight he says we're looking for owner operators and company drivers we do dry vans running across 48 states and no force dispatch 
No pay hold for owner operators as we pay 90% of the gross. Company drivers, they're looking for two years. Trucks are automatic with fridge and AC inverters and in excellent conditions. Mostly trucks are Peterbilt and freight liners ranging from 2022 to 2023. He says, if you're interested, send me a copy of the CDL and med card so that we can run you through the insurance and move forward. Well, I'm going to stop right there because I, I feel that that's a red flag. This, this just me. I'm not sending my credentials to anybody without the proper onboarding. That's just me. That's so I says, uh, thanks for responding, but I really would like a phone call. Is this a good number to call? He responds back by saying, are you a company driver cleared on clearing house? I say, yes, I am a company driver and yes, I am cleared on clearing house. But I have questions I would like to ask. Again, is this a good number to call? He says, I'll call later once I'm done with my meeting. I said, cool. Uh, what time might that be? Go ahead and take a guess. Take a good long guess on what time this dude planned on calling me back. He says around 4 to 5 p.m. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, sir. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, so you expect me to be available for your call for about, for about six hours? I mean, the conversation, the questions that I have would take no more than 15 minutes tops. 30 minutes if we extend the conversation, but 15 minutes tops. But yet you want to wait six hours for you to get back to me. That's another red flag. I'm 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 sorry. That's that's another red flag. The first red flag is when you ask me to send in my credentials. That's the first one. The second red flag is when you asking me to wait six hours for for a return phone call. I mean, it takes you six hours to onboard. I, I can understand meetings will be like maybe about an hour or two and maybe onboarding, maybe about another hour or something like that. But you, you, you can't grant me 15, at least 20 minutes so I could get a feel for the company and what you guys got to offer. That's, that's just a red flag to me. So I said, no problem, but why so late? I'm on a meeting and we'll be onboarding drivers right after. So I will try to call as early as possible. So I give the thumbs up emoji. I'm like, whatever. Okay. But he comes back and responds back and he says, I got a quick question. Are you okay on clearing house or are you a SAP driver? And as I said before, I said, no, I am not a SAP driver. And yes, I am good on my clearing house. So he goes into his spiel and what he has to offer. Now, mind you, he got time to text all this information, but yet don't have time to give me a 10, 15 minute conversation over the phone. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So he says, here's the deal. Plenty of freight, 60 cent per mile loaded, CPM deal started, and it goes 3,000 miles for 60 cent, 2,500 miles for 55 cent, and anything less than 2,500 miles, it is 50 cent. That's another red flag. I'm just, just saying, so, so many red flags in this, but... He says, we work with many large and small brokers, including C.H. Robinson and Coyote. 
We have our own dispatch software in truck base AI. Long haul runs with Ultimo pickup and drop off times. We pre book loads so drivers can keep moving to maximize their paychecks. No force dispatching. We mostly focus on the Midwest lanes. No waste time. Drivers are productive and more freight to be delivered. And we're also SAP friendly. So I says, okay, okay, well, I tell you what, here's here's my questions. And we'll pretty much go from there. So I asked them, how much experience do you require? Pre-employment drug screening. What type of runs, lanes, and do you run Canada? Mileage pay or percentage pay, which he already covered. How many miles are calculated? Do you have a cell phone conversation? How many miles can I expect and are they consistent, which he already covered? Is the dispatch force, he already covered that. How often when I make it home? I, I don't think he covered that, but he'll, be, he'll answer that after these questions. Can I come in as a trainer? And if so, what's the trainer's pay? What's the equipment, which he already covered that. Uh, what are they governing that? Do you have camp? Do you have trucks, or do you have cameras inside the trucks? Do you have benefits, and when do they start? What is your pet and rider policy? Do you have team opportunities and lease opportunities? And if you have lease opportunities, do you offer a maintenance program? What deductions other than the tractor? payment that i will have and my last question is is there a sign on bonus so here's his answers to those questions he says two years urine rerun all 48 state no canada 3,000 miles loaded 60 cent per mile loaded no force dispatch three weeks out and three days home no cell phone conversation, no trainer position, front facing cameras, no sign on bonus. 2022 to 2023 Freightliners and Peterbilts, and they are governed at 72 to 75. No lease. Rider must be 12 years and up. Pet policy is a yes. That was the basic uh, answers to those particular questions which is pretty good i mean he says no lease no training uh 75 i'm assuming on the cruise and 72 on the pedal which is cool you got some equipment which is the freight liners and peterbilts let's uh circle back around to the sap since she said we're sap friendly I said, do you guys help with the RTV status? And if you guys want to know what that means, it is the return the duty status, which is step six of the SAP program. And he said, yes, we do help with the SAP program and they do help with the RTV status. Um, their benefits, they don't have benefits. They don't offer benefits as this company is a 1099 company, which is another red flag to me. Because if you're gonna offer me 1099 at 60 cent per mile, that, that don't make no sense to me. I figure if you're gonna hit me with the escrow and and all that other good stuff and i gotta pay my own benefits and and taxes and all that good stuff then you need to kick out a little bit more than 60 cent a mile the going rate for 10.99 is at least 70. do you guys agree at least 60 cent a mile you can get that as a company driver at at, at a at a decent company you gonna offer 60 cent per mile at 10.99? I'm sorry, I'm just not feeling that. So 
So I say thank you. I thanked him for his time and everything because, again, I'm, I feel that if he had the time, and this was like maybe about 10 minutes or so going back and forth. But I figured if you gave me 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the chat, you, you could have gave me that over the phone. Hey, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's just how some of these blackout companies rock out. Because I'm beginning to notice that some of the companies that I call that that pops up in the Facebook, that if you have your phone anonymous for whatever reason, their service is either going to dial tone the phone or they're not going to answer. So you got to actually show your phone number for them to for their system to pick up. And this is like this ain't the first company that that had happened to. So I'm just saying these now they figuring out ways to to not answer the phone because of how you got your phone set up. So just to let you guys know in the future that what companies like these black op companies on Facebook and and other social media platform, you might want to call from uh, a different number than your main number. I'm, that's just a suggestion. Uh, they hauled General Freight and they're all driving. So, Cora, out of Indi Indiana, I'm, I'm going to assume that this company is out of Indiana because I couldn't find no viable information other than the website and their Facebook posts online. Uh, they got a couple of reviews on Glassdoor and a couple of reviews on Indeed. But when I looked up the address from their safer uh, information, it it shows a it, it shows a residence. So I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, of course, when you dig a little deeper on their safer, they only have two violations, and that's dealing with the HOS. But other than that, there's no other uh, violations that I can actually find on this company. So is that a good thing? I want to say that's a good thing, I guess. Martin on YouTube. Definitely go over there and check him out. Let him know Lockout Men sent you. And uh, see what he has to say about Core Freight. Hold on. Yeah, so I was going to do this video for uh, Core Freight. It's a trucking company based out of uh, Illinois, around Chicago. These motherfuckers, they accept SAP drivers or whatever like that. So after that company closed down, I got on with another job out in uh, Chicago. They're called Core Freight. And they accept SAP drivers. You know, so I flew, from, I flew there or whatever. I was there, I was working for like a week, like seven, nine days or something like that, seven or nine days. I did over like, I did over like 3,000 miles in one week. Now, the thing with that job is you gotta rent the truck and you gotta rent the trailer. So for the uh, trailer, he charged me about like $1,300. I mean, for the truck, he charged me $1,300 to rent the truck, 250 for the trailer. And then you gotta pay for insurance, ELD logs, if the sticker, and some other shit. Oh, and $300 for escrow. So about for that whole week, I spent like two, I spent like $2,000 in fuel and then for like truck expenses or whatever, like uh, to rent the truck and the trailer. So I had grossed over $7,000. They took the cheese off the top and left me with 80% of it. So that was like 5,500 out of, uh, cause I grossed like 7,500 and they took 20% off and left me with about like $5,500, right? So out of that, they took out the money for fuel. They took out $2,000 in fuel and then they charge all that insurance and the escrow and ELD log and shit like that. They charge me for all that. And they charge me money for the truck and the trailer. And I'm running, you know, I'm driving for these motherfuckers for like a week, a week straight more than that. Friday come around when it's time to get paid. 
my motherfucking check was only three hundred and fifty dollars and nineteen cents. Stay away from that motherfucker. Stay away from that company. That company is a scam. I'm just letting y'all know. Out in the Illinois, Chicago area, there's a lot of these companies out here that want you to rent their truck, rent their trailer, and they'll bring you on as a SAP driver. Don't do it. Core Freight is one of them. Don't do it. Those you guys want to get your suggestions in for the next MTC? You can do that by hitting me up in the Gmail. That is Lockout Men Podcast Guest at gmail.com or you can leave it in the comment section or you can hit me up in the cash app at dollar sign lockout men let me know who would you like to be reviewed and you could get a shout out for that review until next time everybody who's next 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 next, next.